Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Gray Matter. Today's going to be a little bit different visually, as I'm trying something new by adding video clips. Please let me know what you think and if you like this style better. We're going to be going over the world of IoT devices, also known as the Internet of Things. From medical devices to your own personal network, along with the threats and emerging attacks that put these devices at risk. Let's jump right into it. So what is the Internet of Things? The Internet of Things consists of a system of interrelated devices within a network, and these things are embedded with sensors, software, and other types of technology that serves the purpose of connecting and exchanging information with other devices on the Internet. In 2021, there are currently over 10 billion active IoT devices, and this is projected to surpass over 75 billion by the end of 2025. So how does this work? You may be aware of some common IoT devices that you can put in your own personal network, and you may find value in them. You may have your own smartwatch if you're into fitness, outdoor cameras for security, or even a smart fridge. These are all IoT technologies that can make life easier on a personal level. The way that IoT devices work is that they're connected via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, other wireless protocols, and they collect data to complete some sort of function after analyzing it. They're typically automated. IoT devices are also extremely popular in the healthcare device market. And they're specifically called IOMT, or Internet of Medical Things. These are predicted to reach about 176 billion by 2026. Some very important devices are things like glucose monitoring, as IoT devices can provide automatic monitoring of glucose levels in patients. When one doesn't have to record things manually, it makes things much easier. Heart rate monitoring devices are in the same boat and that they can help fight the challenges. These devices have an accuracy of 90% or better. Other than these devices, the medical field can also use things such as robotic surgery with internet connected robots that go inside the human body performing surgeries that are often exceedingly difficult to perform with human hands. So let's get into IoT security. With anything connected to the internet, there comes the need for security. And IoT security is just cybersecurity that is a focus on protecting, monitoring, and remediating threats that are related specifically to IoT devices. The need for security in IoT devices isn't any different. And there are threat actors finding new ways to exploit these vulnerabilities every day. One thing you'll find is that security is often an afterthought with new and emerging technologies. Since any smart device can be an entry point, or rather an entrance portal into the network, IoT security is very important. This can be very difficult for organizations to manage. On top of all of this, traditional security measures, such as antivirus and firewalls, can't be implemented in the same way that you would on traditional network devices, as they cannot support and weren't really even designed to handle the processing and storage requirements for these types of tools. This means that they are usually not designed to have security tools added with the ability to even remediate new threats. Though there are some devices with the support of adding more security measures, they may not be compatible with an organization's enterprise security tools, meaning that these devices will not be able to be protected under the organization's current tools, policies, and procedures. On top of this, these devices still need to be patched, and the fact that there are so many will make it incredibly hard to get them all up to date. Now let's talk about the types of threats. One scary threat that comes to mind is the use of baby monitor IoT devices, as they've been in the news recently for this. These devices are used to protect a child, but a stranger can have direct access to the camera, eavesdropping capabilities, and even chatting directly with the right exploits. The MyCam from MySafes came fully equipped with outdated firmware and publicly known vulnerabilities. 
One was to simply change the HTTP request and allow full access to the features of this product. Researchers at SecConsult found six total vulnerabilities, including broken session management and insecure direct object references, missing password change verification code and validation, available serial interface, weak default credentials, enumeration of user accounts, and outdated and vulnerable software. Next, we'll talk about some of the most common types of attacks on IoT devices. We'll start with DDoS attacks, which are attacks with botnets that shut the system down as it tries to complete the requests. Firmware exploits, which are higher levels of attacks that can focus on drivers that communicate with the hardware. Man in the middle, which is where an attacker intercepts the line of communication. And this can lead to information being leaked to the person listening. Data interceptions. These are different from man in the middle attacks, but a similar outcome. These take advantage of the fact that many IoT devices aren't encrypted, and an attacker can steal login credentials that are being sent out in the open. Physical attacks, which could be when a USB device is plugged into an IoT device. Brute force attacks. These are when passwords can be brute forced, but so can IoT devices themselves. Unauthorized access. This could be related to a locked door IoT device, as someone could find a way to break into it. Ransomware. IoT devices can be affected by ransomware as well, or they can be a direct way into the network in order to complete a ransomware attack. Radio frequency jamming. An IoT device may not even work if an attacker interferes with the way that it communicates. Let's talk about best practices. Since most IoT devices don't have security built in, there can be a huge risk with hackers finding them perfect targets. Up until recently, there weren't any real standards for IoT security, but I was able to locate some information online about these. NIST has some documentation, along with the ETSI, or European Telecommunication Standards Institute. Another interesting find that is worth looking into is the OWASP ISVS, which is a community effort of security verification standards. To name a few ways to keep IoT devices protected are done with the following best practices. Change default router settings. This is appropriate for all networking gear. It's important to rename the router besides leaving it as the default name from the manufacturer. Also make sure to change the default privacy and security settings as well. Those defaults are for the manufacturer's ease and aren't meant to be used by the user. Disconnect IoT devices when they're not in use. Figure out what features are needed to day-to-day, -to -day, and don't leave things on that aren't being used. Pick strong passwords. This is for all security. Make sure to not reuse passwords, as they can be an easy way in to other devices and accounts and they can even be used in credential stuffing attacks. Avoid using universal plug and play. Anything that's easy may not be secure. This could be because it lacks updates. Additionally, universal plug and play makes it easier for other network devices to discover each other without additional configuration. Finally, keep your software and firmware updated. Firmware updates keep you protected with the latest security patches and will reduce the chances of a cyber attack. It's important to allow automatic checking of updates. Though we mentioned that security tools aren't always compatible with IoT devices, they do exist. IoT security doesn't have tools that can provide absolute, complete protection across all devices. This isn't unusual as security oftentimes requires multiple types or a blend of sorts from both the endpoint security and cloud security. Some tools include next generation antivirus, which uses AI and machine learning to identify new threats. It goes beyond regular signatures and analyzes hashes, URLs, and IP addresses. 
Next is Endpoint Detection, or EDR, which is a solution that provides continuous comprehensive visibility into an organization's endpoints. It's important that they have advanced threat detection, investigation, and response capabilities. Then there's Managed Threat Hunting, which is where an organization can outsource a threat hunting team and bring in crowdsourced data. Lastly is Threat Intelligence Integration. This is where tools can be tuned based on intelligence feeds against more advanced adversaries, such as APTs or advanced persistent threats. So what about you? Do you think the security issues of IoT devices will prevent their advancement in the enterprise space? What about deterring users from buying them altogether? Maybe some, but most likely there will continue to be advances in education. The Federal Trade Commission is currently aiming to bring government regulations to manufacturers and they'll be bound legally. There are also more companies who are taking security seriously in the development process, but only the future will tell. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and please leave any questions or suggestions down in the comment section below. Thanks.